This is Brandon Labrador, and he's 19 years old, did not go to college, literally doesn't have a degree. There's always a backup plan. There was never a plan A, you know what I mean? In his first month working with me directly, he actually ended up writing a little over $20,000 of business. And in this video, we're going to be talking about his journey, how he got into insurance, what his advice is for younger people out there on betting on themselves, taking risks, going out on a leap of faith. If you're not 100% confident in your ability to succeed, you're never going to succeed in the first place. There's no secret sauce. There's no secret formula. There's no secret tip. I can give anyone the only thing I can say is you need to Brandon welcome to the podcast man yes sir I appreciate it Johnny of course brother so dude um we're just talking a little bit backstage but I wanted to go straight into your story man yeah. because you're you're a, a younger guy to where like I I relate to that a lot and I think a lot yeah. of other people might be out there young hungry motivated they they have an inner drive for them but dude how did you yeah. even get to the spot where you, you come out of high school, don't go to college, and you end up falling into insurance. Talk about that, man. Yeah. So, I mean, it was always, like, my goal my entire life to be an entrepreneur. I always wanted to be a business owner of some sort. I always knew that I had uh, passions for bigger things than just a regular 9-to-5 job. Um, at first, I wanted to be a doctor just because that was kind of what was forced upon my, from my parents as, a, as an Asian-American. Yeah. But... I really uh, I started off doing other small side hustles, uh, videography business, and then I realized that these all these businesses and side hustles they weren't really scalable, nor were they uh, super profitable at the time. So that was when I first was ever DM'd and you know heard about the life insurance industry, and yeah. I didn't even know it was a super profitable industry until I was you know DM'd about it, and I joined my first ever captive agency when I was. 18 years old. I started when I was 18. So I got out of high school, graduated. And in my first two months of summer, I think I got, I bought my insurance life, life insurance course, and I got yeah. licensed six days later. So I bought the course Dude, that's wild. licensed six days. Later. Yeah. So I was, I was licensed immediately and I was almost instantly hooked on the idea of just telesales because of the fact that I've always like love movies like full of wall street yeah. and uh, i felt like this was like the perfect you know place to do so but uh, that was kind of my journey and how i got to life insurance dude and, why uh, yeah why why like what kind of like about the industry that you heard or saw right away that yeah. you're like dude this is what i actually want to do well at first in general it wasn't just about necessarily the product itself first it was just because it was sales i've always yeah. loved the idea of being you know the middle man between two things uh, between a transaction, obviously, we're the middleman between the, you know, the insurer and the insured. Uh, that was one big thing for me. It's seeing an industry that in which you're only the middleman. Yep. Um, other than that, just residual income, just the fact that you're able to compound passive income over a set amount of years and just continue to pay yourself a salary off of residual income. Uh, that was something that kind of turned me on towards life insurance rather than maybe like solar or something like that. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. So you come into the industry, you're getting going. You're you were with a, a or are with a company that like literally is not known for like actually like generating leads or buying leads or anything like yeah. that. And what's crazy is that you came in and you just absolutely crushed it. But it didn't start there. I remember like yeah. we're on a call. You're hesitant. You're not sure. I mean, this yeah. was this the biggest investment that you ever made. Oh, without a doubt, a hundred percent. This was the biggest investment I've ever made, and yeah. it was the most profitable investment I've ever made. So not dude, only awesome. was it the so, biggest amount of money I've ever put, but as you're saying. Yeah. So, dude, like, why? Like, what, what? What's it about yourself that you're like? I need to bet on myself. I need to do this for me. Like, it's not about yeah. the course, the product, the the coach, whatever it is, right? Like, what was kind of that thing that was like, you know what? This is for me. I need to bet on myself. I need yeah. to invest in myself. Um, you know, for me, it's always, uh, it's never about necessarily just the product. It's always about the person behind the product. So obviously yeah. Johnny yourself, like I felt like you were pretty reputable in the insurance industry, felt like you had a lot of, you know, people saying that your program was already working for them. So that was really what really like made me decide to move forward and believe in myself. But in terms of, you know, believing in myself, I always felt like no matter what the industry was, I could always find success anywhere I was at. It was uh, it was just about making sure that what I was receiving on my end of the investment was actually oh, something yeah. that was going to be, you know, helping me turn a profit and yeah. obviously being able to control my own lead flow, have high intent leads that are easier to close. It just made 100% sense to go ahead and move forward with something like that, already knowing my sales ability. Yeah, but what's that like? What's behind that for you, right? But obviously, yeah. like 
the, the, there's other people out there that might not invest into like my program specifically, like whatever yeah. it is, but like, there's something that's, that's not normal for a 19 year old to go out and be like, yeah. I'm going to like pay into my education, my future. I'm going to yeah. invest into myself. Like what was like, where'd that belief in yourself come from? Honestly, man, I, cu I couldn't tell you, I couldn't tell you where it came from. I would just say that it was always something that was there. I think to be the best, you always have to believe you're the best. Yeah. And I always felt like that the only thing that was holding my, myself back was the place I was at and the people I was surrounded by or, yeah. you know, the resources I had. So I, I knew that by, you know, just getting myself better resources, I can make anything happen. And I've always just had the belief in my mind that, you know, if I were to go somewhere, for example, like a life insurance agency, I'd always believe that, you know, maybe not right now, but in the next few months, you know, few maybe next year I'd be the top producer at that agency for whatever specific product it is. Not yeah. even just life insurance. I feel like I could genuinely crack at, you know, solar sales as well. Yeah. But, um, I mean, like you said, I mean, I, like I said, I can't really tell you where that came from. I just would say that it's something that's yeah. inside and people and something it's not. Dude, that's like so important to have, like you have yeah. to have that drive, that level of like, dude, I'm, I'm going to make it happen regardless of yeah. what it is. Like I've invested, like literally I just made a huge investment into this like new program. And it was like, it, I get literally turned a profit literally like that same day. And what's crazy yeah. is like, if you do those things, if you go out on a limb and you invest in yourself and you believe in yourself personally yep. that like, Hey, whatever it is, whatever aspects of this thing, like I'm going to make it 110% worth it. Like I'm going to make a thousand yeah x on this investment and that's the power of coaching which is really cool yeah um that you pay yeah. some and you just make so much more back <laughs> yeah exactly and it's not even just about that like you said like it's really just the belief in yourself i mean yeah. if you're not 100 percent confident in your ability to succeed you're never going to succeed in the first place i mean if there's always a backup plan there was never a plan a you know what i mean yeah 100 percent, and you have to and so like let's let's transition this a little bit to like for a newer or beginner, like final expense telesales agent that's wanting yeah. to crush telesales, like what is your what is your advice to them so that they can actually master telesales and start closing deals consistently? Yeah. I mean, you just had what like a five six k day the other day. Yeah, so yeah. Like th those are like I mean I I I I wasn't shocked when I saw it because that was maybe like your first second or th it was like it wasn't your first one, but it was a, it was another huge day. So like, yeah. Talk to talk to somebody that's newer that's listening to this on yeah. your like tips on how they can become a master yeah i mean first and foremost uh it's not about just knowing the product it part of sales is obviously mastering the product knowledge um yeah. but really what it comes down to for me is and i feel like why i could succeed in any industry and be a top producer anywhere is just mastering the art of sales and i think that's something you've said in your course as well is yeah that to master, there's no secret sauce, there's no secret formula, there's no secret tip I can give anyone. The only thing I can say is you need to master the art of sales, whether that be mastering the first 30 seconds of your presentation, making yep. sure you can retain people on the phone, that's the number one thing. If you're not gonna keep people on the phone, you're not gonna get closes, you might get lucky and get somebody that just has the time of the day to listen to you. But for the most part, people are so quick to get off the phone with you that if you're not able to keep somebody on the phone, then you're not ever gonna be a top producer. And then yeah. second thing I feel like would be rebuttals. And there's only really like five to 10 main rebuttals that you're going to get in life insurance and in any industry, in any space. Uh, I think you need to master those rebuttals and need to be able to, and what I mean by master is you need to be able to beat those rebuttals in three different ways. If you don't have three different ways to beat a rebuttal, you haven't mastered that rebuttal because then if they hit you with one rebuttal and you beat it with one way, well, they, they may just come back with you with that same rebuttal or they'll come up with another rebuttal for you to give. So that's mm -hmm. one. another thing is mastering how to beat rebuttals. And then third, um, I think, is just the mastering the art of closing, just making it so simple. And I think mastering the art of closing comes with mastering the art of presenting the product and the numbers. Yep. So it's super important never to leave a client off with the price uh, as the last thing you're saying. You want to explain the price and then explain the value again because you never want to leave that sour taste of just the monthly bill in their mind. You want to you know, explain what the price is, but then you want to mm -hmm. explain what that price does for that person. 
So, for example, like if I were to be like, so Johnny, that $5,000 of coverage, that's going to be $60 on a month to month basis. And what that's going to do for you is that's going to make sure for the rest of your life, your sister never has to worry about coming out of pocket for that cremation. And you can rest assured and take that weight off of your shoulders now, knowing that you never got to worry about it again. Does that sound fair, Johnny? Yeah. That Something makes like sense. that. Yeah. So for me, it was, that was something I learned at my previous company was uh, it's something we call PVP, so price, value, or no, I apologize, VPV, so value, price, value. So coverage amount, what the price is, and yeah, then that's, rebuilding that's the value cool. after that. Dude, I love that. And I yeah. think like it, that's one thing that like I never, I, I used to build value and then drop price, but now it's like you, you want to yeah. like give a little bit of value, then drop price, and then you give more yep. value and say with this you're going to get xyz and what what's cool about yeah. that is like it it's there's something psychology like like in the mind that's yeah. like when you drop the price they're knowing in their they're they're justifying it in their head okay yeah. all right that's that is worth it okay that that yeah. i like that too exactly. okay and all of it together is like okay that, that actually makes sense i could do that exactly Exactly. Because when you just like, for example, and this is how I feel like I close a lot of bigger deals too. sometimes is when you're pitching bigger numbers, the last thing you want to do is leave the client with the like high price in their head. Like, for example, yep. I closed a lady the other day for about 400 bucks a month on herself. And then I'm closing her husband for another 250 bucks a month. So it'll be like 8,000 AAP annual premium for that. Yeah. Just them two. But for me, it's the biggest thing, like I said, is you never want to leave off on that high price. And that's how you close bigger deals is by truly explaining what this person is going to get. Because you got to imagine to close bigger deals, these are higher level clients. These are people that are smarter with their money, yada, yada, yada. It's not just an emotional sell at that point. To sell a higher clientele, I think it has to be logical based uh, exp explanation as well in selling. Because you can't just hit on the you know the emotional side of things. They already know what they're looking for. They already know that that's an emotional problem, yep. you know, covering a burial. The, the next thing they need to see is just the numbers and for you to logically explain it. And that comes in the close when you say the price and then you explain exactly. what it does for them and then answer any questions they have. Dude, that is that's gold. You the, the people that you are selling are going to buy based on emotion, but they're, they have to yeah. back it up with logic. That's how you keep... Yep the policy that's how you keep them actually bought in to what they're yep. doing because then after the fact when the emotion's gone the logic will stay yep. and that'll allow you to keep continuing on which is huge so like when a prospect for you right when you're presenting on the phone and somebody's just kind of they're just not opening up for some reason like how yeah. are you like able to dig a little bit deeper to get to the real like the why of why they actually yeah. want insurance now well, for me, I like to really hit hard on being a little bit more assumptive with things. So first things first, like when they fill out this form, you already know they filled it out for a reason, even if they don't remember it. You know, they filled it out because they were thinking of something in their head that made them think of a burial or a cremation. So, you know, for a fact that there is some type of concern there, even if they're not going to admit it. Now, your job as a salesperson is you got to imagine that these clients, they have a brick wall in front of them, right? They don't want to they don't want to give you anything. So your job, yeah, your job is as the salesman and, you know, the representative of whatever carrier you're going through to take down the brick wall, brick by brick. And yep. ways you do that is just little things, little things here and there, like throughout their presentation, like first and foremost, building validity and credibility by giving your NPN number is a big one. Um, cracking jokes here and there is a big one for me. Um, getting these people to open up to me by getting them to be my friend first and foremost. Yep. So, and I think that's real big is. You know, you can't just be super assumptive and be super logical with things. You also have to be a people person and you have to have super good soft skills, meaning you just got to be good at talking to people. And if you're not able to communicate with these people on like a, you know, on a regular friend to friend basis, like on the phone while you're talking to them, you know, yeah. obviously these people aren't going to open up to you. My thing is that the way I speak to these clients and my prospects uh, after the very first intro part is uh, I'm very, getting very friendly. I'm getting super comfortable with them, just laughing with them. And that's a big reason why people open up to me and I don't get pushback on, you know, you know, asking concerns or why questions because they already feel comfortable enough to share a laugh with me. These people are going to be comfortable enough to share the pain behind why they, you know, requested the product. Yeah. Now, that's not going to that's not going to solve your problems 100% of the time. Obviously, there's always going to be the clients, you know, that are, are going to want to open up no matter what. 
And yep. sometimes you just got to accept that and just move on. There's always going to, in my opinion, this is something I heard from Daniel G. I spoke to him a few months ago, but what I heard from him was there's three types of clients. One that needs to be convinced, one that's fully on board, and one that's just not going to be closed at all because, you know, they're, they're ignorant, they don't want to listen to it, whatever it is. But there's always going to be that one type of client that's just impossible to close. And yeah. in general, that just happens. It's just sales. It's the name of the game. It's a numbers game. You just move on. You move forward to the next no. Yeah. So, I mean, dude, like how are you like if they're like, hey, I, I really need to think this over. Like this is a lot of information yeah. uh, for yeah. me. Like I, I'm just I'm going to have to get back to you, Brandon. Mm -hmm. So just overcoming that I need to think about a rebuttal. Yeah, there's a few ways that I go over it And like I said, I think that's one of the rebuttals I'm really good at is because of the fact that I have three different ways that I can beat the rebuttal uh, First way for me I, and I need to think about it is your rebuttal actually saying that you know I've been in the industry long enough to know that it doesn't take more time to make a decision like this It's usually just a price thing or I'll say it's usually just a price thing or there's something that wasn't clarified Is there anything I could clarify for you? And if there is, then that's when you pinpoint what their true objection is. Because I need to think about it is just a closed a door. Screen. Yeah, it's a smoke screen behind a, what the real rebuttal is and yep. what the real objection is. So that's two ways to beat the rebuttal. Uh, my third way is just saying, you know, well, it's basically the same way you do it. It's just saying, hey, it doesn't really take more time to make a decision like this. It usually just takes more information. And what I'll do from there is I'll just kind of re-explain you know the product see if this is even something that makes sense for them you know asking them hey does a pro policy like this even sound like it makes sense for you and your family and if not then you just let them go you know that's your no f your first no you move on to your next no you move on to the next presentation yep. that, at that point yeah. there's nothing you could do yeah and, uh, and one thing that you like and this is like something that that I've <laughs> really been going through and, and really like training people on now is like hey like, in, and this is what's cool is like the, the community is consistently like expanding and growing and consistently yeah. being innovated. And like, we're, this is like a whole, we're going through all these objections and like mastering them. Today we went over the, the think about it, right? And so you really want to diffuse right away. Yeah, that's not a problem at all. Take as much time as you want to think about it. Can I ask, like, in your own opinion, do you feel like this actually can give your family the peace of mind that you have been yeah. looking for? And they say, yes, maybe, I don't know. Okay, and, and why do you feel like it can though? Like, what about the policy that I laid out actually feels like makes you feel like you can? Okay, so when you do go ahead and think about it, like, can I ask what what is it that is coming up for you yeah. that's giving you that pause yeah. to go and think about it? Is it the the price? Is it the premium? Mm -hmm. Is it you need to talk to <clears throat> who? Whatever it is, right? And you can literally just yeah. go and boom, that's diffused, that's gone. Yeah you just pierce through that think about it and now you're into the real yeah. objection and the real objections yeah. now you're back into it yeah like the real objections you're going to get are a uh, money there's going to be like a partner which is still a smoke screen um and yeah. then it's going to be logistics and fear right fear of you as a sales yeah. guy fear of the insurance company fear of tomorrow like yeah. what happens when they do pass or is there the, their family going to get money or fear yeah. of the past of them making a bad decision in the future yeah and one thing about sales and you like you would know this too is like you just have to consistently be assumptive that they actually do want it and like what's nice yeah. about us is that dude these people fill out the forms they filled it out we know that they want it so yeah. we can automatically come with that posture of like yeah, assuming exactly. that yeah, yeah. that's and awesome and i feel like and a now, lot of the i need to think about it rebuttals are beat in the introduction and a beat through the presentation i feel like you beat a lot of rebuttals you get at the end by yep. having a good presentation you know presentation are yep. cl closes in my opinion i've always been told and i've always learned myself personally is most of them are made in the intro you know in the first 20 50 seconds of the call if somebody's going to be you know willing to buy and to just like building validity it gets rid of the fear aspect for them you know being you know likable as a person you know gets rid of the fear of you know the sales agent whatever it may be but about yeah. i think 50 percent of rebuttals you get at the end of a close are beat in the presentation yeah, you got you got to be able to overcome objections when you see them before the you pitch, and then also after, and that's what's going to help you yeah. close more deals. Because if you think like you you listening, if you think about it, like how much deal, like how much money are you losing not knowing the common objections? Like that when that yeah. hit me, I was like, dude, like I I need to change. I need to do something. I need to like actually figure this yeah. stuff out because you're going to consistently get 
objections if you don't learn them, right? So what is your, yeah. talk us through like your schedule, right? On a day-to-day -day yeah. basis to be able to sell $22,000 in your first month. Like yeah. what did that actually look like um, for you? Uh huh. So I'm going to be completely honest here. Uh, my schedule for this month, I wouldn't say it was the most, uh, something that anybody would want to replicate because right now I'm in the process of getting contracted through a few different independent marketing organizations and opening up my own independent brokerage. So I've been doing a lot of back end work and haven't been too focused on dials. But if I were to be locked in on personal production all month long, I'd say my schedule for that on a month where I'm pushing just hard production, I'll wake up at around eight, breakfast, whatever, I'd say start dialing at 10 to 12. 10 to 12 is like mainly for appointment sets for later in the day, or you're focusing on trying to get a close in the morning to work on some back end work later on in the day. Like, you know, maybe, you know, sending out some gift cards for clients or whatever it may be, because yeah. things like that are super important for retention. And then from 12 to two break time, go to the gym, take a lunch break, whatever. And then from Two to three, I'm doing some type of sales training, some type of you know rebuttal training. Just looking at some type of you know class for you know rebuttals or objections. Just sharpening my sales skills, and then from three to nine, I'm hitting phones hard. I'm trying to get at least four presentations from three to nine. And uh, if I don't get four presentations, sometimes I'll buy leads in a state in a you know an earlier time zone, and I'll call those until I get my fourth presentation and hopefully a close. Yeah. That's good, man. And, and like for you getting over the learning curve of like generating your own leads, like what are some things that people need to like think about or consider before generating their own leads? Uh, one is having a set schedule first and foremost. So that way you're not just wasting your money on leads and not being able to dial them efficiently. Yeah. Uh, secondly, it would be a power dialer in my opinion. I think power dialers make oh, for sure. dialing super easy, make it so much more efficient increase your contact and connection ratio uh, by tenfold in my opinion and you never get put on spam likely that's something you want to consider uh, third thing is you know consider what the demographic of the people that your leads are going to be you know for example final expense advertisements you're most likely to be getting older clients so you you really want to make sure that you have you know carriers that are going to be fit for final expense you know making sure that you don't just have whole life carriers for you know, fully underwritten things, want to have some simplified issue in there because that was something I struggled with at first when I first started yeah. investing into these leads was being through a captive agency. Uh, my senior graded product with my agency it wasn't great. My my carrier had a terrible senior graded four year death benefit, so it was a four year graded death benefit, and that's not something that's any crazy. single <laughs> yeah it's not something any senior wants to hear. Is I have a four year waiting period, you know. So yeah. that's something you want to keep in mind is actually making sure you do have some of the best products out there that you can sell to these final expense people. Yeah, you definitely do. And, and getting a power dialer, making sure that you're actually doing this is super important and honestly like makes yeah. life easier. Cause I remember like having a hand dial and that was like, rough. Yep. that was, that was like a lot, yeah. but now it's so easy. You just go on Kixie and boom, you're just rocking and rolling. Yep. And now you're just able to rip leads. But what's crazy is like, there were some days, dude, you didn't even make any dials. They were calling you, which is yeah. fun to talk about that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's a day uh, this month, I th I've had this happen a few times in my career actually, but I had somebody call me cause I called them the day before. So I, I was at zero dollars for the day because I was doing some sales training for my agents in my agency and I just helping them out with contracting stuff like that. So I was, you know, showing them something on my computer for sales training and then in the middle of sales training, this was actually a great, you know, sales training for them live to see a live call because I got a call in in the middle of sales training and, you know, being the pr producer that I am, I'm never going to not answer somebody that's calling me back. So yeah. I answered the phone and from there straight into the presentation, uh, she was about it. She really wanted the insurance and you could tell from the start that she was going to be a lay down. Um, so it was a nice, a nice way to show my, you know, my people what an easy, you know, lay down close looks like and just showing them yeah. like a smooth presentation. And I think I ended up closing her for about, I think it was one thirty a month. I think it was. And then yeah. there was also another similar situation where I called her that day and then she called me back four hours later and I'd only made $10 for the day. And I went from 400 ALP to 700, another 700 later in the day. 
So yeah. I had like an eleven hundred dollar, eleven hundred annual premium day on like five dials or ten dials. I remember, I remember that. That was wild. Selling two policies yeah. with eleven dials, which is cool. Yeah. Um, as we wrap up here, man, um, there's like, there's probably an agent out there that's like, dude, like I want to be able to like actually make this happen myself. I want to be like Brandon, right? I want to be that guy yeah. that's actually closing deals consistently. Um, what is your advice for them to be able to actually get to that spot? Like, what does it actually take to become a top telesales producer? I'm going to be honest here. And it's really just repetition, man. And for me, like I used to sell the worst type of leads and that, those were bait and switch leads, you know, free will kids going from, you know, free product to then trying to swindle them into life insurance, not swindle, but you're switching them from a free product and saying, Hey, it comes with life insurance, blah, 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 blah. So really you can make it work with any type of lead. Um, yeah. No one's gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and say that you need the best lead or the worst lead in the world to be a successful producer because I wasn't you know, an unsuccessful producer with the worst leads. It's really just coming down to repetitions, man. And the reason why you wanna have the best leads is because then it just lo lowers the amount of repetitions you need to get a close. Yep. But realistically, there's no way you're not making 10,000 in a month if you're doing $400 a day consistently. It's just impossible. Yeah. It's just truly impossible. I think the only way that happens is if you truly, truly are not meant for sales. And I don't think there's a single person out there that's not meant for sales that gets into sales. Yeah, you have to. Well, that's awesome, dude. Yeah. And I know, like, what? talk about your future, right? Like, what's what are you building yeah. out? You're building some really special stuff, which is cool. Talk a little yeah. bit about that and, and then the future, what, what that looks like for Brandon 2.0. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, right now, me and my partner... Uh, he's been one of my buddies since I was younger, but we recently opened up our own uh, independent brokerage. So right now we're contracted through a bunch of carriers through our S or not our S Corp, our LLC. So right now we're currently in the process of onboarding a few agents. We have a team of about 20 agents right now. Huge. And we're going ahead getting them contracted, getting them writing deals. We had our first big day the other day. It was about a 10K agency day. Let's go. So, by the end of this year, I think we're looking to have easily with our, we have a recruiter on board right now. She, uh, she said that easily we can get 10 experienced and 10 unexperienced agents per week until the Jeez, end of the year. Dude. So about over easily over 150 agents by the end of the year. And I think in the next five years, the realistic goal is to have over a thousand agents realistically. Let's go. Let's and, go, uh, dude. Where can people yeah. where can people reach out and follow you for more and follow you on your journey yeah. as you're doing this, man? Uh, definitely in my Instagram. So it'll be my first and last name, Brandon Labrador underscore, and uh, that's pretty much it. If you guys ever have any questions or ever want to reach out to me for some advice, feel free to DM me on Instagram. I'm always open to talking to people. Let's go. Well, if you guys haven't yes, already, sir. go do that right now, and also subscribe to the channel here. Bring a ton of new content. For you guys, top telesales producers like Brandon. So hit that subscribe button right now. Drop in the comments down below your golden nuggets, what you're taking from this, what you're going to implement. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.